hit Control Shift X like this, and I can see this in real time. In Godot, you can use an editor script to execute a piece of code within the editor so that you can automate certain tasks. Let's learn how to use them. So first of all, take a look at the setup. It's very simple. I have a mesh instance 2D in the middle. The mesh is using a quad mesh. I have the scene root as a node 2D. And besides that, I have nothing else. So first of all, we're going to learn how to create an editor script. And to do that, let's go into the file system right click, create new script. We're going to call this my editor script. And the important part here is to inherit from editor script. Just like that. There's a template you can use. That's going to give you the basic editor script functionality, but we're not going to use it for the sake of introducing things, you know, piece by piece. Let's create this, open it up. Now it's just a regular script. For this to be a true editor script, we need to include two things. First of all, we need to make it a tool script. If you don't know what a tool script is, you really should understand it first before getting into editor scripts. I have a tutorial covering that, so if you haven't seen that, just take a look and come back here. The second thing we need to include is the run function. We can do that by saying func run underscore run and you can just press tab to autocomplete. And this is the essential function that you need to have inside of your editor script. When you go into file run, this function is going to get called. Or you can also use the shortcut, which is control shift X. So let's go ahead and print something in here. Let's say hi. Let's open up the output tab and I'm going to go file run and that's going to print high. I can also use the shortcut control shift X and that's also going to call this function. So this is what an editor script essentially is a tool script that has a run function, which can be executed within the editor using file run or, you know, the shortcut control shift X. So let's now try to come up with a useful, you know, real life use case of an editor script. First of all, in order to run the editor script, you have to be inside of the script editor and whichever scene you have selected here in the scene tab will be the one that the editor script has access to. So for example, currently we're inside of this editor script demo scene and I can get this scene, get access to the scene by calling get scene. So this function is from the editor script class and it's going to return the current scene to us. I can save this in a variable called current scene and we can actually print the name of this. You can say current scene dot name. Let's get rid of the high up here. I'm going to hit control shift X while I have this scene selected. We should get the name editor script demo. And as you can see, we do, if you click on somewhere else and you try to hit control shift X, it's not going to work. Make sure you have the editor script selected. Just like that. I have another scene here from the tool script tutorial actually. And this one has main as the root node. So if I go back into the editor script while I have this other scene selected and hit control shift X, now I'm going to get main, which means like I said, we have access to the scene we select in the scene tab inside of the editor script. Okay, let's go back into the demo scene. And what I want to do is I want to access the mesh instance 2D within the editor script. And I want to give it a random color each time we use and um, we hit run. If you take a look at the visibility option here in the mesh, there's a modulate. This is a color, um, which means it has red, green, blue, and alpha values, floating point values. And by changing them, we can give it a different color. We're going to do that in the script randomly. So let's open the script back up. Now that we have the scene, I'm simply going to do a search using find child. 
This will take in a pattern, which will be, will be the name of the node that we're looking for, mesh instance 2D. If find child finds this node named mesh instance 2D, it's going to return it to us. Otherwise, it's going to return null if it can't find it. So let's save it. Let's say mesh. And then we can do a check. If the mesh isn't null, which means the find child call was successful, we can just print the name of the mesh for now, just to test if it's working or not. So right now I have the editor scene, editor script scene selected. So this should be giving us the mesh instance 2D when I run it. And as you can see, it does. But if I select the main scene, go back into the editor script and run it here, it's not going to work because we don't have a mesh instance 2D node inside of this scene. Just demonstrating to you that, you know, um, this isn't going to work on other scenes because we don't have this node. So make sure to have, you know, checks like this. Otherwise you might actually crash. Going back into the demo scene. Now we can actually take the mesh, access the modulate, and we can give this a new color so that, you know, we get a different color each time. I'm actually going to create a variable up here called random color and we'll set this one to random color and we can give this random F random F, random F. That's going to give us three different random floating point values between zero and one. And that's going to work perfectly because the RGB values are floating point values that go from zero to one. We can also print this random color to see what we got. Okay, so let's give this a test. Right now, you can see that it's white. I'm going to go into the script hit control shift X. You can see that this was the color we got. And if we go into the you know, scene, you can see that it changed. You can go back, hit again, go back, different color. And you can see that going into the script, we can't really see the color, you know, we have to, you know, hit control shift X and go back there and take a look. What we can do to speed this up is within the script editor, you can click on this button which is going to make the scripting editor floating just like that. And now I can simply control shift X like this, and I can see this in real time. This is just one example use case of how you might use editor scripts. The possibilities are basically limitless. You can take any manual task you have and turn it into an editor script. It's essentially like a plugin that you can easily create. So that's it. <laughs> this is the basics of, you know, creating an editor script, how to use one and just one simple use case of it. If you like this tutorial, take a look at this one as well. Also take a look at the links in the description. As always, it's a pleasure teaching you. I hope to see you in one of the next tutorials and take care.